Oh, hey YouTube, what are you doing? Get off the couch, you lack like discipline. It's time now to turn this mush into muscles. Hey guys, what's up, it's the Tominator here. Today we're gonna to be talking about Dorian Yates' best shape ever. I haven't done one of these videos in a while and I'm excited about this one because I haven't really talked much about the shadow so far on my channel, other than my very first video. So this one's been weighing on my mind lately. I've been thinking a lot about it and I've been doing a ton of research the past few days to determine what show Dorian really looked the best. Because the obvious answer is 1993. We all know he came in just ridiculous that year with this newfound level of mass, this unprecedented size that had never been seen before and just shocked and wowed the bodybuilding world. Plus the guy was diced to the socks. So that combination of rock solid mass and bone dry conditioning is pretty hard to beat. But as I was doing my investigation, I came across a couple bodybuilding forums with polls asking what was Yates' best year, and 1995 came in second both times by a fair margin, so I figured there was something worth looking into there. And yeah, sure enough, uh, when I went and checked it out, I gotta tell you, 95 stacks up surprisingly well to 93. So that's why I've got these two picks here. I've got over 20 pictures from each show, and we're gonna go through and compare side by side to see what year was truly his best. Oh, and uh, later on, of course, I'll mention some other shows where you look great but didn't quite make the cut, but we'll save that for the end. So first up, we got the front double bicep, and this one is 93 all the way, no doubt. For one, he's more defined. You can see better separation here in the quads, um, but mainly it was the difference was in the arms. I'm sure most of you are aware that he had that bicep tear in 94, and he was never, it was never the same after that. I mean, he's got like half a bicep here in 95, and it's really thrown off his symmetry. So for that reason alone, 1993 wins this pose. But even before the injury, he had a minor asymmetry going on right here. Uh, you can see that the left arm was always smaller than the right, even when he was healthy and in his prime. And even if it wasn't, even if it was just as good as this one on the right, uh, these are still not world-class arms by any means. I always thought that they were relatively undersized compared to that massive back. But then arms were never a strong point for Dorian, and neither was the front double biceps pose for that matter. This was always one of his weakest poses, and it was definitely his worst after the injury. So let's move on to the front lat spread, a much stronger pose for Yates. This was his bread and butter right here. He pretty much completely crushed everybody in this pose. In fact, I made a video of one of the best front lat spreads, uh, of, of the best front lat spreads of all time, and you know I'll link and you can check it out. And Yates came out on top as the best bodybuilder in history to ever hit it. But here, you know what, I actually lean towards 95 um, because you can see that the gap uh, between his arms and his lats is shrinking, which is an indication that he packed on some extra mass through the lats. Uh, so on the other hand, he's definitely sharper and drier in 93. Uh, over here, he's got sweat streaming down his stomach, and that's an obvious indication that he missed time in his prep and is holding some excess water. Uh, but still, I just like the way he fills out the pose in 95. Basically, you'll see that the theme here between these two shows as we go through these comparisons is that he was better conditioned in 93, but he was a little bit bigger in 95, so I feel like that's a pretty even trade-off, which is why 1995 measures up so well. So next we have the side chest, and look at this, it's a mirror image. It's like identical twins. I mean, if you didn't know better, you would swear this was from the same show. I'm leaning ever so slightly to 95, though, because uh, his near arm and shoulder look a little bit bigger than they do here, uh, but that could purely be due to a slight difference in the angle or the lighting. We're really splitting hairs here. So, same with this one. I mean, it's virtually the same. Again, I'd go with 95, but that's probably just because these pictures over here, um, this picture is a little bit blurry and maybe the lighting's not as good. So this pose is too close to call. Let's move on. The back double bicep is pretty clearly 1993 in my mind. I mean, he looks great both years. I, I really like him here too, but um, you can see the striated glutes and a little bit more definition and detail through the back here. The arms definitely measure up bigger and, and better compared to the rest of his body than they do here, where they look a little bit uh, a little bit deficient compared to that massive back, right? Um, but what's so surprising is that you barely notice the torn bicep in '95. It doesn't jump out at you at all. That injury, in theory, should have been his downfall, but it really only hurt him in the one pose, the front double bicep. He was able to hide it really well, even in the back double bicep. But again, um, anyway, I, I, still, I still like him in 95. It just doesn't quite measure up to 93 in my mind. Although this black and white close-up looks more favorable than the last picture we just saw. 
Uh, in the rear lat spread though, I like them better in 95. Um, you can see the added mass through the back and uh, notice how his lats kind of curve out whereas over here they just kind of shoot out in a straight line like a triangle so I, I prefer this look um, just the shape of it I guess uh, the extra mass maybe that's just me I mean his conditioning is still better over here on the left uh, he doesn't have those folds in the lower back but this is nothing too major and uh, just in terms of the mass and the shape and the overall impact of the pose, I gotta go with 95. I feel like Dorian was born to be a mass monster, and so with him, you know, the bigger the better, pretty much, especially in the back department. His upper traps also look larger here than they do uh, in 93. And that's not just the, the angle or the way he's hitting it, because if we go back, you can see even here, there's more of a, a slope going on. So. He definitely added some mass through the traps as well as the lats, and the overall back, I feel, is improved. And next we got the side tricep, another dominant pose for Yates. For a guy with subpar upper arms, as I've mentioned, uh, he's shockingly effective in it. Along with the lat spreads, this was his best pose. He just hits it really well, like his arm always looks massive, and you can see a clearly defined horseshoe anytime he hits it. Uh, make no mistake about it, this is one of the top side triceps in history. You could even make an argument for Dorian being the best to ever hit it. And again, it's like a carbon copy. Both ears look virtually identical, just like in the side chest. I do like how in these 95 picks he kind of opens up a little bit more, making himself appear even wider. I think that's a smart strategy. And for that reason, I'm again in favor of the 95 version by an ever so slight margin, because he still looks terrific here too. And in the ab and thigh, it's close once again. Here I prefer 93, um, just because he looks a little bit sharper. Otherwise, basically the same thing. Uh, once again, he's, he's definitely sharper here on the left, but um, I feel like this is not really a flattering shot of him in 95 because it doesn't look like he's fully hitting the pose. Um, his, he's not flexing 100% because his abs weren't that washed out. See, I mean, they look a lot sharper in this pick, and you can see what I was talking about with the extra mass through the lats. He definitely added some width in that department, which accentu uh, accentuates his V taper. And uh, so that's why I personally prefer, uh, in this particular comparison, I I'm going towards 95 for this, uh, these two picks. And in the most muscular, he's looking thick as hell in the chest, especially over here in 95. Uh, great traps as well both ears. Um, the forearms and legs look solid. I think his arms and delts are relatively weak here. Uh, they just weren't very strong body parts for him, period. And that's why he was never able to dominate in this pose like he did in so many others, because the most muscular is really catered for shoulder and arm dominant guys. So he's never going to match a guy like Lavroni in the hands class version, right? Uh, he still looks respectable nonetheless, and once again that torn bicep is barely even noticeable. Now, this is a uh, better pose for Yates, one of his best poses. Uh, not even an official pose, but when they're transitioning into the rear lat spread, you know, they do this Christmas tree thing to showcase the lower back. And uh, Dorian, when he hits this pose, his lower back really comes to life. The outline of his lower lats just looks so crisp. Uh, these pictures don't even do it justice. You have to watch the video because um, before he hits it, his lower back is just like, meh, okay, whatever. But then as soon as he retracts his scapula and flexes his lower lats, they just instantly sharpen in front of your eyes. It's like you're watching it in standard definition and then all of a sudden it becomes HD. So it just like, it, it just gets so crisp. You gotta see it, trust me. And we got another variation of the Christmas tree pose. Uh, the lighting here in 93 looks a lot more favorable, but he still looks awesome both years. Uh, Dorian really did have one of the best lower backs in history. Maybe even the best, because the density and hardness, it was real, man. And next we got him in another unnamed signature pose. Uh, I got a, I don't even know what this pose uh, has a name, but, um, you know, maybe a front single bicep. It's one of Dorian's signature poses, and he was doing it even before he tore his bicep, as you can see here in 93. I definitely like him here more because his arm is simply bigger uh, and looks more balanced with the rest of his physique. Um, not to mention the better definition in the quads once again. It just, you know, this this is, um, his bicep looks shorter, his 
tricep doesn't have that great of a sweep. It, maybe it's the lighting, but it just doesn't look as good. It doesn't measure up as well, considering he put on that extra mass through his, his uh, lats here. And yet again, we have him in another unnamed signature pose. This pose should really have a name, because so many bodybuilders do it. Uh, I don't know, maybe it does. Let me know in the comments what the deal is there. But again, I'm going to go with 93 simply because of the arms. Uh, everything else looks pretty even otherwise, but he's just displaying, you know, he's displaying more width in, in 95 even, uh, the way he's standing. But still, the arms are just not up to par, not as good as they are here. And again, in the front relaxed pose, I got to give this one to, um, to the guy on the left because he looks more balanced and defined. He still looks really good on the right here. It's just that, once again, his arms look a little bit small compared to these wide flaring lats. Uh, and he's not, so he's not quite as well proportioned. And lastly, we just got two random epic picks from both shows. The rear relaxed pose showing off the superior conditioning, right? And the obviously world-class back. And then we got the incredible Hulk, like most muscular here, uh, hitting, Dorian hitting the crab shot. And it actually looks better than his regular most musculars as viewed from head on because you can really see the thickness and fullness of the chest here just popping out at you. And his arms look bigger from this angle too. Um, you know, even his legs look thicker as well. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a more impressive most muscular picture of Yates than this. Because like I mentioned earlier, this isn't really a strong pose for him, but he looks like a freaking beast here. So yeah, those are all the picks I've got to go through. So what's the final verdict? At the end of the day, I do have to go with the common consensus and say that his best shape was, in fact, the 1993 Mr. Olympia. But his 1995 showing wasn't far off. And that's why I wanted to do this comparison and show you guys just how good he was that year. Because I feel like it's a contest that is often overlooked for Yates because, you know, everyone's always ranting and raving about 1993. But the truth is that he looked almost as good two years later. So if you're not a stickler for conditioning, you might even say that he looked better in 95 due to the added size, because the torn bicep, as we just saw, was practically a non-factor. And let's, lastly, let's uh, just briefly go over some honorable mentions. So I know somebody's going to mention the 1996 German Grand Prix, because he looked superhuman in that show, and I agree. The thing is, everybody looked incredible in that show, because it had this supernatural lighting. So if you go and check it out, I've, I've seen, um, there's video footage of the, the pre-judging and the routines from, I think, all the competitors in that show, so go check it out. Ronnie looked amazing. He looked good enough to win the show that year, and that was before he really, um, you know, brought up his mass and became a huge threat, like a front runner. And, you know, everyone just looked amazing in that show due to the lighting. So I got to put a bit of an asterisk on that. Uh, the other thing is that um, I noticed when I was watching the video that when Dorian relaxed, there was some definite distension in his midsection, so I have to dock points for that. I think he was tighter and more in control here in, in 95, and certainly in 93. Another show uh, that people might mention is the 1992 Mr. Olympia, because his, his conditioning was out of this world that year. It's probably his best overall uh, conditioning that <clears throat> he ever brought to a show. The thing is that he hadn't acquired his trademark mass at that point, and I feel like 93 is just a bigger, better version of 92. 1994, he looked good, but not as good as 95. Uh, in 96, his arms were starting to deteriorate. And by 97, they'd completely melted, and he had lost his trademark granite conditioning as well. So 1997 was easily his worst year. So that's the deal. 1993 was king. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Let me know if I missed a show or if you think there was a time when he looked better. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and feel free to subscribe for more. Until next time, homies, I'm the Tominator, signing off. I'll be back.